Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're going to be talking about this mixer here. Now we've got two other mixers, but primarily it's going to be about this pile. Why did I decide to bring two more mixers on the table if we're really going to be talking about the pile is I did want to have a Mackie and a Soundcraft here to give you an idea of differences between buying mixers. Now, right now in the US, this happens to be the Soundcraft Notepad 8 FX, which is going for $149. Next to that, we've got the Mackie Mix 8, another big popular one. This one only goes for $89. And right now, one of the hot sellers is this brand new mixer from Pile, which is called the PMXU. 68 BT, and this is only going for $68. So yes, huge price difference between these products. They're for different people, and the features are, are really intense on all of them. Well, not so much on the Mackie, but it's like, you know, kind of a bulletproof, oh, I don't have to worry about it too much kind of product, I guess. That's what they say. If I'm looking for a podcasting mixer, something that has a USB capability, something that's easy to use, not a lot of buttons, pretty straightforward for using for you and maybe a guest, uh, that would probably be the Soundcraft, the Notepad 8FX. Why do I say that? It has a USB interface, has a very good audio when it comes to what's going to get picked up on your computer. Very straightforward for using the knobs and controls, and it's a very nice machine. Uh, outside of that, the Mackie Mix 8 is a very simple machine. Doesn't even have effects in the model or on the board. You have to buy an external processor, something else to do effects. It doesn't have USB to your computer, but remember it's $89. Uh, limited in some of the buttons on it. Quality wise is very good. That's what they're saying. Same thing here with the Soundcraft. Now, amazingly enough, this is doing a lot of what's going on here and it's doing it for a fraction of the price. We're even cheaper than the Mix 8, which is one of the big reasons why it's popular. It's less than hundred bucks. But at $68, you're gonna get four mic inputs instead of two, like these guys here. You're also gonna get, I kid you not, built-in Bluetooth. So if you're looking to get your music from your phone or tablet straight to the actual mixer, you can do that via Bluetooth. Also has a built-in MP3 player, which can record with a little bit of tweaking, you can actually make that work. At the same time, not one or two instrument options when it comes to the high Z pass for your guitars or instruments. All four of them on top, all four, have that high Z system set up into it, which is really nice. Now, icing on the cake is where these guys here use quarter inch, which is what we see on a lot of mixers this size. I'm not taking away from a product if it has quarter inch outputs on it. Uh, but the Soundcraft uses XLR. Nice, nice way to do it. Pile on this series also uses XLR and they balanced or unbalanced. That's your choice. You can use it any which way you need be. Uh, so if I need to change the cable setup at the other end, I can do that. Or I can just go straight XLR three pin from here straight to the speaker. Now you're saying, well, you know, maybe I'd like to use it for karaoke. Yes, you can. You can do that, no problem. You can also, if you're a DJ, you've got a controller and does a whole bunch of things, but a lot of times uh, microphones kind of like a last minute patch on, they do this, they do that, because you're a DJ, you need to be able to talk. So they do that for you as well. But if you think you need more than one or maybe two microphone inputs, this is a pretty good system to go for. Uh, it's gonna give you high low controls on each channel, which is what's represented by the blue knobs. Uh, then it's gonna have your effects control, which is gonna be a proportionate gain to your master volume at the bottom. And it even gives you a balance. Now, on the first four channels, pan, my apologies, on the first four channels, it's gonna be panning to the left or right because you do have a single channel going in, coming out to two channels. So it's either we're gonna give it more to the left or more to the right. There's no dedicated signal there. We're gonna make it left or right, our choice. And then we get to the very end, which you still have, you've got the ability to control uh, your next line, basically your line five and six get controlled right off of here. And you also get all those functionalities to it as well. So easy machine to use, straightforward. And when it comes to the effects, they didn't want to burden you with, let's say, you know, oh, here's eight or 12 or 16. They basically said, we're going to give one control, which is going to operate the delay and one that's going to operate the repeat. 
allowing you basically to make that mix any which way you want. So again, if you're using it as a DJ or for karaoke, or maybe a karaoke DJ, uh, that's a great way to go. Now it's a small mixer, it's a very portable mixer, it's an easy mixer to use when it comes to that. So the buttons are tight, but we see that on a lot of mixers. If you're trying to get features and you're trying to get channels on a mixer, it's gonna get pretty close. Now, and at the very end, of course, now these red knobs, that's your main out. This is going to be your headphones and you're going to have your USB MP3 Bluetooth control gain right there. Now that's still proportionate to your actual main, so there's no worries of that. Now these buttons that are located right here across the first four channels are for phantom power, which is the red one, so yes. Amazingly enough, I have the ability to put a condenser microphone on here, no problem. That's what I choose to do, just turn it on. And then right beside it, that's my high Z for my instruments. I can plug an instrument in there, bounce it off, hit that button, you're all set. Now don't confuse that with, you know, using a microphone with a quarter inch, because it's not gonna help, and I'm gonna demonstrate that to you. So, microphones, these are combo jacks. Combo jacks mean that I have the ability to put a three pin XLR connection into that, no problem. I can slide that in, just line it up with those three pins, boom, it's in there. And I also have the ability to use a quarter inch. Now, this is normally supposed to be for an instrument. Uh, and then I just slide that right into there, right into the center, no problem. All right, so we've got two mics plugged in, and yes, I've got the second mic plugged in using a quarter inch cable. Uh, this is more to demonstrate to you what it sounds like. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set everything just at 12 o'clock, so, you know, 50% up the gain, the whole thing. We're gonna have our line level set, our main out set at the end here. We're gonna bring that up to about 30%. I do have a condenser microphone plugged in right in front. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up the one connected to the XLR, and there we are, that's connected to the XLR, and of course we can turn the effects on or off. So we'll turn that off, and you're hearing that. We'll bring in the effects a little bit so we can actually distinguish the fact that we are talking over there. And there we are on that. We can adjust this all we want. We can adjust how much the output of the effects are going to affect the main gain control. So this is proportionate, so if I have it at 25% here or at nine o'clock, and I have my main volume all the way up at uh, 12 o'clock, so that's about 50% on the gain. It's always gonna be 25% of the mix. If I bring this up more, it'll be more dominant. It'll be more up front. So same thing, I can adjust the repeat and the delay just by turning these knobs here. Any recipe that you like is fine. That's all you gotta do, bring it up, bring it down, find what you like, and you're all set. Uh, that's pretty much it, each one, once you dial this in, it's locked in. These yellow knobs here will allow you to adjust each microphone independently for how much effects that particular mic is gonna give out. Now, for volume level, again, we'll dial it back to the same levels on both. This is the actual quarter inch cable at the exact same gain controls of the XLR. So we notice a big difference right there. For me to get this mic here to match up, I need to do one of two things, either go out and buy a new cable or go from 50% and bring it all the way up to 75. It's the only way I'm gonna make that cable work. If in a pinch you're stuck, yes, you can do it, but you won't have a lot of room to, uh, to set it all up. So it's always better to go out and get yourself a new cable, uh, get the right cable, do the right job, and you'll be a lot happier. So again, this is the right cable, and that's hooked up here, and again, that was only at 50 where I had to turn this microphone all the way from 50 up to 75% just to make it work. So that's pretty much it when it comes to microphones connecting, having that all hooked up. Remember, those buttons there are not gonna change anything. Uh, if I pick up this microphone and we'll turn it up so it's loud enough so you can hear it, there you go. Uh, the phantom power is not gonna affect it because it's a dynamic microphone and the actual high Z is not gonna do anything either because, well, this isn't an instrument. So there you go. The only thing left to talk about is the Bluetooth. Bluetooth and the MP3 player. So the MP3 player is plugged in right now. Uh, I've got a USB stick. All I need to do is actually hit the button right here, the play button. That's how easy it is to get that to work. Uh, it's a very nice display. It's very detailed. Um, 
only have the tracks that you want on the actual system because it'll be too hard. I currently have 78 tracks on this USB stick and there's no quick way to get to any of those except skip, 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 and that's kind of a pain in the butt. So that's what's going on there. Now the Bluetooth is a much nicer feature. You just press the mode button until you see the Bluetooth display come up, pair off to it. You'll be able to play from your phone, tablet, or computer if you have Bluetooth on it, straight to here. Now, if you do plan on looking at something like this for karaoke and you're thinking, well, what's the advantage of that? Well, besides doing karaoke straight from your phone, which is kind of like what we would think of, if you have a smart TV with Bluetooth on it, you can do straight from the TV Bluetooth connection right to the actual mixer itself. So remember, TV needs to have Bluetooth because you're gonna find that Bluetooth option in the audio menu, you're going to engage the Bluetooth on the mixer, you'll be able to search on the TV just like you do on your phone or tablet, connect wirelessly to the mixer, and then you don't have to worry about buying an adapter, a digital to analog converter, or having any cables go between the two. Uh, and then it's as simple as, well, go on your phone, make sure your TV and your phone have the same YouTube account on it, and you'll be able to cast from your actual phone to the TV, no problem. So that's if you wanna do karaoke. So it's a good way to get that job done. Now remember this USB connection here is not for your computer. This model does not connect to your computer. So if you're looking for an audio interface, they have other models for that. For example, if you look at the PMXU63BT, we've done videos on that one, a couple of them actually, and that one also comes with the ability to connect to your computer. Uh, I don't have that one next to here because uh, it does lack on a feature. It does have pad buttons on the top, which is a little bit more convenient for microphone connections, but it doesn't have a ability to either have a balance left to right for the main line in, nor does it have uh, the ability to pan left and right for the mic inputs. That's just kind of one feature for the whole thing. It does have a mid range, so it's kind of a little bit of a different, you know, uh, mixer. They do look similar, so you'd pick one over the other. Uh, they're both very good for karaoke and they're both very good for. Uh, doing any live broadcasting with it. So uh, the only thing I wouldn't use this mixer for, but maybe I would use the other one. The 63 is because of the USB interface, better suited for, you know, running a podcast maybe, where this one definitely, I wouldn't buy it for that reason. So outside of that, good for DJs. You can plug your controller into here, run your mains out. So this way you can get everything hooked up, especially if you have a controller that only has RCA outputs on it. Um, just get an RC to quarter inch adapter. There's lots of cables like that. That'll allow you to plug right into the actual board and be able to move on from there. It'll let you plug in extra microphones if you need them for your guests, no problem. If you're just looking for something because you're a one or two piece band and you don't want to spend big bucks on an elaborate setup, but you do want good quality and good end result, uh, this probably work out. It's a steal for $68. Uh, if they actually manage their pricing better, they probably could have sold this for more money. They could have easily have gotten it to $100 in the U.S., that's for sure. But they prefer to sell 1,000 of these at $68. And especially with Amazon, remember, we always have links down below to help you find that in the States. Uh, in Canada, we have it, of course. So it's here. Uh, you'll be able to check pricing for us as well down with the links. So if you have any questions or comments on this mixer, again, good warranty good features, easy to use. Uh, if you know somebody who's looking for a mixer and you're looking for a gift for them, this is a pretty good place to start. Uh, so there you go. So yes, I like the Soundcrafts, especially if you're looking for podcasting. I like the Mackie if you need to throw something in a junk bag and you're worried about breaking it, this is probably a pretty solid piece. I'm not gonna take away the, 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 the pile from any of those because I think it's a solid piece. We haven't had problems with a new line of products. It's incredibly affordable, plus it has a little bit of red trim on it, which is always nice. Uh, be different, I say, is a nice thing. Uh, and it's easy to use. So there you go. 100 and change, or 150 bucks, I think, 90 bucks, or less than $70. It's up to you. If you're looking for small mixers, there's lots of options and there's lots of good brands. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.